Hey guys, in this video, I'm going to show you how to make a table in R Markdown using the cable function from knit R. Uh, there are several different table functions, um, but this one is particular for my class, my structural equation model class that I'm teaching. And it's just to include um, kind of a no frills table, so kind of your first step into using Markdown to make things other than output and um, be able to output that table into Word. So we've got this setup going where we're using a Markdown file, a basic Markdown file that outputs into Word documents, and we're using this to do our assignments this year. And I have taken the assignment from a class assignment that the video is linked below that you can watch about how to work this particular path model assignment. And I've just stuck my assignment into Markdown. And what we're going to do is talk about how I can take that and make a table of my output. So especially when you're doing sim models, you might have tables of the different model fit indices, or maybe tables of the path, of the, uh, path coefficients. So there's a lot of things you can do here, and there are lots of ways to do this. So kind of you can be creative, or you can take what I've coded here. So the path assignment is to build a couple of different path models. So we're going to use Levon and Simplot. Now my Simplot is throwing an error I haven't totally figured out yet, um, but it doesn't mess up me making my graphs, so I'm just kind of rolling with it. And we've pulled uh, a correlation matrix from uh, one of the books that I'm using. And we're just building a model of um, children's interactions with their parents and aggression. And so if you want to learn more about all of this code, uh, watch the other video that explains how to um, input covariance correlation matrices and build structural equation models. So mainly I'm just going to build my first model, which has got a whole bunch of um, interconnections. I can look at that model fit. I can create a sim model of it. So I'm running a structural equation model here on that covariance um, correlation matrix. Uh, I can look at the summary of that matrix. But right now I'm not really interested in all this because you can watch that and me explain all of that in the other video. So mainly I'm interested here in creating all of the, um, all of the models so that I can build a table. So I'm going to skip over some of this. So we've got models uh, one and two here, and model two. Oh, I made him angry somehow. Okay, there, now it's not mad at me. Then I've got a third model that I'm trying. So I've got my three model fits saved down here. And so these are my uh, Levon outputs, which you can look at with the summary function. And so in the summary function, I can get all of all of my, so a bunch of the fit indices and then the path coefficients. But specifically, since we're wanting to work here and create a table of fit indices, I'm just going to use my fit measures function. And the nice thing about the fit measures function is that it saves the fit indices separately. Now this up here is set up so that you can look at them as you go on the fly. So when we knit this document here in a second, it's going to um, be very long because it includes all the model outputs and all the fit measures and pictures. But really the magic of what we're talking about in this video is down here. Okay. So let's say I've run my whole assignment and now what I want to do is create a table. Okay. Now one of the first big things that you have to do that makes like mm, no sense to me because I haven't been doing markdown for a very long time is in the section where you're going to create a table um, and I would always put it kind of in its own separate section, is that it says results equals ACES. Don't know. That's just one of those things. So you have to have that section in there um, so that it knows that you're creating um, a table. Okay, this is specific to tables, I think. Okay. So what I've done is I've saved each model fit. So I've taken that fit measures output from here, where normally I would be just looking at it and looking at all the fit indices over here. Um, and trying to figure out which, you know, which one do I want to look at. And so, you know, before I was using Markdown, I was having to go back and forth. So I would look at it over here, and then I would go type it in my table in Word. But now, I don't even need to do that. Um, what I can do is just tell it to save all of that and print the table out for me. So let me make this a little bigger so we can talk about what's happening. All right. So I have saved those three fit indices. 
pieces. So this is the code from above. And the only thing I've done here is round it. And I've used that round function to give me three digits because since all of these are normally less than one, a good three digits is a good number. You can do two if you'd like. Um, this isn't perfect. You should also tell it to print out at least three digits, but we're just doing one little step at a time. So we're gonna round all of those because otherwise it will give you 17 or 18 digits and it'll look crazy. Okay. So the only thing I've added here is this round function, which just rounds um, the decimals off. And so I'm just gonna save those. So down here I have the like big Levon output saved, but I also have this model one fit. So if I typed model one fit over here, it just prints out those fit indices. Okay. All right, now to create my table, I've got my output saved and I'm gonna make myself a blank table. So think about this as in like inserting in Word, like you insert and you have to pick a number of rows and columns before you insert. Um, so we're gonna do that here. And so I'm going to give it, I'm going to say I need a model name for column one, chi square, degrees of freedom, rim C, SRMR, and CFI. So if I've got those, two, three, four, five, six, that's got six columns. Okay. I know I'm going to do three models, so I need three rows. You would think you would need a row for the labels, but the labels are going to come in as part of the column names. So we only need three rows. And what we're doing here is creating a blank table. It's in matrix format instead of data frames. Um, I think cable will work with either data frames or matrices, but matrices sometimes are just a little bit easier when it comes to making these tables. So this is gonna make me a blank table. So if I printed out table down here, you just see a bunch of NAs. So now we have to fill in our table. And here, if you screw this up and you did five, you can always come back and fix it and add it on later. So this is like you, if you were like, oh no, I need, I also need TLI. I could create seven columns here. So I'm gonna create those column names. Now you have to create the table first before you add the column names. Um, so that's why I just did this line here, was just to kind of figure out what I wanted to do and what order I wanted to put it in. So I'm gonna give those, that column, uh, that table some column names. And so I'm gonna say model, chi-square, degrees of freedom. So now if I print out table over here, oops, if I type it correctly, now that table has some column names. And then the tedious part about this, because um, it isn't quite automatic, is I have to stick in all the pieces I'm interested in from that table. Okay. So I'm gonna do this by, col by row. You can also do this by column. So whichever way floats your boat, but since I only have three rows, I'm gonna do this by row. And so what I'm saying here is, uh, let's stick some stuff in the table. Remember rows come first, so row one and the whole row. So I'm telling it I wanna stick everything here in row one. And then just be sure you do them in order. So for the first thing, I'm gonna call this model one. For the second one, I need to put chi-square in there. And so this is how you can pull chi-square out of that saved fit measures class. Um, because it saves as a vector. And so we, we can't do the dollar sign thing. And so it's tempting to do model one down here, fit dollar sign chi-square. Now we could force it to do that, um, but it's just as easy to say, give me chi-square. So if I copied that and I ran that over here, you can see it gives me the chi-square number. Tell it to pull degrees of freedom, pull RIMC, pull SRMR, pull CFI. Now how the hell did I figure that out? Okay. One, I just kind of played with it until I figured it out. But what I did was I said, okay, I saved model one fit. So I saved that fit measure, measures information. And then I just typed it over here in my console and I looked at it. Okay. Now I can tell it's a vector and not a data frame because it's over here and it doesn't have a little drop downy thing. So it's not a list. Um, and it tells me, it says levon.vector. So that's kind of nice. Um, and it's not up here in data. So it doesn't think it's a matrix or a data frame. And so it's a vector, but it's a named vector. So see all these cute little names here. So anytime numbers have names, the names will pop up with them. Okay. And then I just looked for the ones I needed. So this is just like looking at the output and just scanning it until you find the numbers you're interested in examining, um, just like we did in the assignments. But now I'm just telling it to save that number. 
And so I tried this model one Moodle model one fit dollar sign and nothing popped up. So that was a good sign that I couldn't do that that way, but I tried it anyway. And it was like, yeah, no, don't do that. So I was like, okay, let's see what I can do. So remember that you can call vectors by their names, which is why we started this semester with that intro to R assignment to kind of remind you of a little bit of these things. So I just look for the name I'm interested in. So I could throw in the confidence interval and p-values. You could put all of these in here. Um, you don't, because you don't ever want all of them. But you could pull whichever ones you were interested in the most. <clears throat> like TLI, if you were interested in that one. So I'm going to save this all as row one. For the second one, I cut and pasted this. So just make sure you change all the numbers. This is all row two. So I got it model two, model two, model two, model two. And you'll notice what's happening is in our table, it's filling in. Model two here is mostly zeros, which implies it's an overfit or an inappropriate model, which you can see more in the other path video. And it won't give me three decimals. So the round function will round, but if the number is less than the number of decimals, it just kind of leaves them alone. There is a way to get it to give you all the decimals. But for me in this particular assignment, just figure out how to make a table. So we're throwing model three there. So now I can look at my table again, just to make sure I got some numbers in there. It's looking pretty good. And the setup's the hard part, the printout's the easy part. So it's the knit R package. Okay. And there are a bunch of table options. So this is not the only one. It's just, I know this is a package that you guys have because you're using knit R to do your assignments. Okay. And then the function is cable for cable, knit R's table. I told it to print out my table. So the first thing here is what do you want to print out? And then I gave it a cute caption. Cable has a lot of options. And these are really the two we're going to use. And I could tell this to run. Um, it's not going to print out anything over here. And it'll show me kind of a preview of the table here. But all the action happens when I hit knit. So let's hit knit. This assignment's going to look crazy because it has a lot of output. blow this up a little too big <laughs> all right so it's gonna run like all this output so much output and then I am getting this little warning here and that might be a Mac thing I don't know so but it still gives me my my pictures my very ugly simplot pictures um so um if you're one of my students and you're having that error don't worry about it scroll 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 all the scrollings stuff 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 and then we finally get to the very end and then here's our table. Okay, so this is in gray. I don't know if you can see that quite with the contrast on my computer, but it made me a table saying this table rocks. It made this nice in Word uh, format, so I could change this to be APA style. If you wanna get really fancy, there's a, a really cool library called Papaya, P-A-P-A-J-A, -A that does APA style tables. Um, but I knew that given what we're working with this semester, we had knit R and I just, kind of easing into this. Um, but it printed out a nice, pretty nice table of my uh, fit and disease here. And um, that is what I want you to be able to do for the second assignment um, is figure out how to print out a table of all of your different models that you tried. And so this is how you would do that.